Determination of large molecular weights by the ultracentrifuge. Consider a macromolecule that is a very large molecule with a molecular weight of several millions immersed in an incompressible fluid of density rho at the absolute temperature T. The volume V occupied by one such molecule can be considered known since the volume occupied by a mole of macromolecules can be determined by volume measurements on a solution of macromolecules. A dilute solution of this type is now placed in an ultracentrifuge rotating with a high angular velocity omega. In the frame of reference rotating with the centrifuge, any particle of mass m at rest with respect to this frame is then acted upon by an outward centrifugal force m omega square r, where r denotes the distance of the particle from the axis of rotation. What is the net force acting in this frame of reference on a macromolecule of mass m if the buoyancy effect of the surrounding fluid is taken into account? So, uh, first of all, I would like to remind you of non-inertial reference frames. So if we are in an accelerated uh, reference frame, so let's say that this is an elevator, we have a suspended mass on the ceiling, uh, it's tied to the ceiling and there's gravitational acceleration g and the uh, elevator is accelerating downward with a accelerator, uh, elevator. So uh, if you look at the free body diagram for this uh, mass, we would note that there is the weight of the mass, mg, and then there is a ghost force, which is due to the acceleration of the elevator, which is pointing in opposite direction. So this would be mass times acceleration of the elevator. And then we have the net force, uh, which is the tension. So there would be a tension here, uh, tension T, which is the net force. So <clears throat> applying this to this problem, we have a mass M that is in an accelerated reference frame. The acceleration of the reference frame is centripetal acceleration, a, a centripetal, uh, which is omega square uh, angular speed square times r or v square over r which is tangential uh, speed square over r therefore uh, this centripetal acceleration on the reference frame is pointing towards the center so analogous to the non-inertial reference frame the elevator here we have a ghost force which is uh, m times a centripetal uh, acting in the opposite direction, in radially outward direction, which we call the centrifugal force. And uh, this force is going to be balanced by a buoyant force. So there's going to be another force here, which is the uh, buoyant force, Fb. And as a result, uh, the net force acting on this uh, mass it will be Fb minus MAC pointing uh, towards the center. So uh, once again, if I uh, look at the uh, forces acting on this particle, the buoyant force is normally uh, when we have objects sinking into a fluid, it's the weight of the fluid displaced. So in this case, uh, our acceleration is not g, it's the centripetal acceleration. So it is the uh, volume of the fluid that we displace multiplied by the mass of the fluid. So uh, therefore, uh, we can see that uh, we are displacing a fluid, which is rho fluid times uh, the omega uh, v which is the volume occupied by the molecule and uh, this is under the influence of the acceleration the centripetal acceleration omega square r so rho v a centripetal which is rho v omega square r and if you write this as a vector this is uh, towards the center 
So the buoyant force will be opposing the uh, centrifugal force acting on the particle. Uh, once again, this is similar to our uh, mg here. The mg, gravitational force, is opposing our ghost force. Here, uh, the buoyant force, uh, which is the mass of the fluid multiplied by centripetal acceleration, opposing our centrifugal force. So uh, let me uh, note a few things here. So first I said that M uh, feels a centrifugal force in this reference frame. This is a ghost force. Uh, this centrifugal force, let me call it FCF, is M omega square R, which is radially outward. Now, uh, during the rotation, M is displacing a total fluid total fluid mass which is rho fluid times the volume occupied by the molecule. Therefore, the displaced fluid exerts a centripetal force on the molecule so this centripetal force is our buoyant force F centripetal is our uh, FB the buoyant force which is rho V A centripetal uh, so this centripetal force is, is called centripetal because it's pointing radially inward. So if I write the net force acting on this mass, I have the centrifugal force m omega square r. Uh, so let me write it in vector form m omega square r r hat. And then I have minus rho v omega square r r hat. So it's in minus r hat direction. Therefore, the net force I will find is omega square r times m minus rho v in r hat direction. This is the net force. But there is something I have neglected here. So uh, as a remark, note that there is no mentioning about the friction so we have neglected the force of friction due to the viscosity of the fluid so we have neglected this effect now let's look at part b of the problem uh, Suppose that the equilibrium has been attained in this frame of reference so that the mean number n of r dr per unit volume of macromolecules located at a distance from the axis of rotation between r and r plus dr is independent of time. Apply the canonical distribution to find to within a constant of proportionality the number n of r dr as a function of r. So since I know the net force acting on this uh, particle, the net force F net as a function of R is going to be given as minus the gradient of uh, the energy E of R. So I can find that the energy uh, at R minus energy at R equals to zero is minus the integral from zero to R F dot product with dr. So this will be equal to minus omega square m minus rho v integral from 0 to r uh, r dr. Uh, so this will give me for the energy of the particle as a function of r 
uh, minus omega square r squared over 2 m minus rho v. You can see that its energy decreases as it uh, gets uh, further away from the center of the uh, centrifuge. Now, the number of density n of r uh, for a range between r to r plus dr will be proportional to e to the minus beta energy as a function of r dr. Uh, so I can substitute the energy here and I can find that the n of r dr is proportional to e to the beta omega square r squared over 2 m minus rho v dr. So as the particle, uh, as we go away from the center, the concentration of the particles will increase if m is greater than rho v. Okay, so uh, m, I'm assuming, is greater than rho v here. It's a, it's a huge mass that we're talking about. And the part C of the problem, uh, measurements of the relative number of molecules as a function of R can be made by measuring the absorption of light by the solution. Show how such measurements can be used to deduce the mass of a macro molecule. So I have uh, N of R given as a constant C times E to the beta omega square R squared over 2 M minus rho V. So if I take the natural logarithm of N of R, I will find that this is natural logarithm of a constant plus beta omega square R squared over 2 M minus rho V. So if I plot uh, a natural logarithm of N of R versus R square, you would find that the slope is uh, beta omega squared over 2 m minus rho v. Since we know rho, we know the volume uh, displaced by the molecule, we know beta, what temperature we are at, the angular speed, we can determine uh, m from the slope. So therefore, we find that m can be determined in such a measurement from the slope of natural logarithm of n of r versus r square plot. The intercept uh, gives us natural logarithm of c, r equals to zero intercept, and the slope gives us uh, the mass uh, since we know beta, omega, rho, and v. So once again, we're talking about a macromolecule in a ultra centrifuge. The molecule, uh, in the reference frame of the molecule, we will see a uh, centrifugal force because we are in an accelerated reference frame. The acceleration of the reference frame points inwards, therefore the ghost force is pointing outwards. So the centrifugal force is m omega square r radially outward. On the other hand, we have displaced a fluid a volume V, so rho V is the mass of the fluid displaced. Mass of the fluid displaced times the acceleration gives us the buoyant force. Normally this is the weight of the fluid displaced when we're doing a sinking experiment in a gravitational field, but here uh, we're, we have a rotating reference frame. So the acceleration is pointing inward. Therefore, the buoyant force is rho v omega square r towards the center. Net force is omega square r m minus rho v in radially outward direction. And we have assumed that m is much greater than rho v here because it's a macromolecule. Once we know the net force acting on the uh, molecule, if, since we don't have force of friction uh, involved, no friction, all forces are conservative. Uh, therefore, we have conservative forces and the net force is given by minus gradient of the uh, energy of the system. So E of R minus E of zero 
e at 0 is minus integral from 0 to r f dot dr. So uh, we can find that the energy must be equal to minus omega square r squared over 2 and minus rho v. And this energy is decreasing as we go further away from the center as expected. Since the uh, particle concentration at position r at equilibrium will be given by the canonical distribution, it's proportional to e to the minus beta e r. So two minus signs will cancel. I will have e to the beta omega square r squared over 2 m minus rho v dr as the uh, distribution uh, uh, for these particles. Uh, and since this n of r is a constant times this uh, Boltzmann factor, if I take the natural logarithm, I find that the slope of the natural logarithm of n versus r square gives me beta omega square over 2 n minus rho v, where I have beta omega rho and v known, therefore m can be determined. And how do we determine n? Well, this is uh, mentioned in the problem statement that we can measure the absorption of light by the solution as a function of r that tells us how n varies with distance from the center.